is my own turbocharger off my truck because testing the S300 base stuff right now and it's really hard to get it to come up in video so the volume is the space between here and here I mean, <clears throat> that's the space that the gas flows through so each one this is an individual volume individual volume individual volume and i apologize for the weirdness i'm trying to do this while looking at the camera make sure it's seeing it what we are looking for this is really easy with diesel because the soot setting um we're looking for the traces see how we have light and dark zones that's telling me how much of the turbine wheel is being used and what parts of the turbine wheel are not being used or at least not being used as much so I said it's my job to after we run these typically it's really good if you can get them just like a spark plug um, with the diesel stuff get them real hot on the dyno and then pull them off and you can look at these traces uh, catch 22's two traces are light spots near edges are just heat because once it gets hot enough it'll burn the soot off but see how we have these dark regions right here this is a zone that's currently not being used as much as these inner zones are so you can see the main flow path out of this turbine housing's nozzle is down this section here and it actually goes towards the center, but it's really hard. Get a picture of the center. Okay, you can see it. Turn out the box of light. Here. So the center of all these has a high gas velocity. So, high velocity lower pressure and where it's darker is lower velocity higher pressure you can see the same with compressor wheels on anything this is a fingerprint so find that see how it, it's sticking right here this because this is a turbulent zone <clears throat> just like how the air comes off the back of your car Coming off the back of this ridge and there's a low pressure high turbulent zone causing this um, the set to stick there so you look at that after running a bunch of turbine wheels you start to kind of slowly kind of start to put two and two together or you can get ideas of what doing a turbine wheel shape change is going to do I'm going to go ahead and put this camera in the vise, and we're going to take this turbo apart. This turbo has probably 12, 14,000 miles on it, um, all, because it's in a 6 centimeter, it was all between, <clears throat> um, probably all between around 13 to 53 pounds of boost. Uh, I'm changing the terminal out. So it has to come apart because I need the compressor wheel, the shaft collar is not on jazz. So yeah, this is a fingerprint that's kind of useless, but you can see here how we have this tip coming off. And if you change the shape of the turbine wheel, those change. Um, if you let these idle for too long, it'll just blacken the entire thing and it's not really too usable so typically a, a really hot run then obviously the turbo cooled down then shut the vehicle off remove the turbocharger from the turbine housing um, and you can get an idea what's going on see how we got some funky stuff going on right here between the called the back plate and where the blade starts where it's coming off
This is really neat stuff, and this is what I like to do uh, quite often, is trying to understand what the shape of the wheel is doing, because it does matter. So we're gonna take this apart. It's just like on the turbine side, you have a pressure and a suction side. Um, and it makes it a little more, it's easier to understand when you look at the compressor wheel. You have your pressure sides, and then you have your suction sides, which are these back faces. And you can see how on the suction side, dirt sticks. While on the pressure side, the dirt doesn't stick. You have high pressure, high velocity. On your suction side, you have um, low pressure and lower velocity than over here. Because as the gas is traveling down this volute, the wheel is also moving away from it. If that makes sense. So as it's traveling down, the wheel's direction is going this direction. Um, so you get low pressure on this face and the air stacks up against the pressure faces. And because it stacks up and the shape of the wheel itself, it gets accelerated. So you can use um, the dirt that sticks to these things as a way to see how much of the volume remember space between and like the pressure wheel can have one or two one or two so it has one then it goes to a two you can think of this like a two valve or a four valve head so two intakes two exhausts but it has a single inlet and then once it goes through the inlet port it splits it off into two, from one runner to two runners um, so Kind of doing the same thing. This is trying to get the air as the pressure increases as it goes down this volute. It splits it up so it doesn't stack so bad here. It'll stack here and here. So it helps get the entire volute to flow as much as possible versus you getting a lot of stacking against this back face with no splitter. You end up with a massive low pressure zone down in this region down here that is a no flow or a low flow zone. That you might find all this stuff interesting. Uh, this compressor wheel has been balanced more, more than, than once because it gets tried on different applications. This is the old balance mark. Just want to show why this turbo has survived. There's the current balance mark. As we see, we're still lined up with our blade um, back there. And when we take this guy off, we're going to find that. There won't be any fretting underneath. Um, the, this particular bearing set and um, collar set has been through quite a lot and has had zero problems. A big part of that is not surging the turbocharger and being careful to try to not operate the turbocharger in a surge region. Um, both of those are really important, keeping the stress loading um, on the compressor wheel down that helps keep it from wanting to rotate underneath the shaft nut this is the older one this doesn't even have all the updates i do to them currently on it so no extra magic sauce this is how i used to do them and this turbo has been just fine this compressor wheel like i said has had it's been through two turbine wheels um, neither one failed just uh, changed designs The internals are the same internals that I've, I think I've had in this thing since probably 2018. Um, they probably have closer to 40 to 50,000 miles on them. So it just goes to show how important it is to keep the turbos from surging to help them survive. So this particular turbocharger, it's a 60 millimeter compressor wheel and it has been um, to 53 pounds of boost and about 30, I think 3,100 RPMs on the street and on the dyno. I have ran this compressor wheel out to 30, I think 3,500 
3300 RPM, a little bit lower boost pressure on the dyno, um, so you can rev them a little bit higher. Um, as you can see, there is no uh, stretching of the wheel at all. Um, everything's perfectly happy. If we look at where it connects, we'll see that it's nice and clean. Um, no vibrations, no fretting going on. If you can tell, this is what I'm fixing right now. The difference in appearances. I don't know if that helped or not. So this is a vibration failure, not on the wheels. You just see how much better everything looks. Here's our turbine wheel. Uh, 7667, same one I've always used. It looks really good. Um, piston ring is not collapsed. Has good spring tension left in it, so we had not over temped the piston ring seal itself. I'm going to go ahead and open up our center. Everything looks phenomenal. So I'm always kind of careful when removing. Um, thrust bearing, you don't want to bend it. <clears throat> the material they're made from is very crack sensitive. These parts all look good. Our upper and lower thrust collars, our thrust bearing looks magnificent. I'm gonna show that to you here shortly. and gooey. <clears throat> a big thing that helps with keeping the thrust bearings alive is um, making sure to run an oil that has high pressure additives or to add a high pressure additive to your oil uh, such as uh, like a Lucas oil break-in oil. <clears throat> Just trying to come up here. So I see all thrust pads are intact. They are tapered. In the direction of rotation that's called a convergent thrust surface. One, two, three, four, five. There's five convergent thrust surfaces on the HX35, HX40 thrust bearings. This one looks fantastic. I have two examples here. Here's one that had been, this one has been surged. This is out of a factory 351. So if you can see it, I don't know if this helps or not. See how it's only knocked down on a one part and then where it starts, it's fine. Um, where it's knocked down is the high side of the thrust surface. So that the high side of the thrust surface is getting knocked down and it reduces its ability to act as a proper thrust bearing as it gets knocked down. And this one, it's on our face side, is from surge. So the compressor wheel loading up heavily, breaking through the oil film and damaging it. Because as we can look on the turbine side, it looks like it should. So perfect good turbine side and a bad face side. Um, that's all that I needed out of the center. Everything looks absolutely fantastic. I'm going to go clean these parts up, 
balance up the new turbine wheel with that compressor wheel.